My goal here is to walk you through the steps to create a geometric mathematical keychain. First thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to go to this shortened URL here and it'll take you to the handout that you see on the screen. Next, I'm going to click on the parent functions link. It's going to open, me, open up to a canvas. And I've intentionally removed the grid lines and the axes to show you how to put them back on and then how to remove them when we're done. So you'll go up to the wrench up here and I'm going to turn on the grid as well as the X and Y axis. It's going to give me a really nice frame of reference for what I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is I'm about to create an image that I can then send to a 3D printer. The first part is I'm going to use the conic function here and so what that means is I'm going to hide my other functions. So that way all I'm looking at is a circle. I'll expand this out and let's go ahead and make it let's go there and let's make our radius We're going to try to make this rather simple for us here. So we're going to put our center here at the origin. Okay. And I'll make the radius a little bit bigger. Why not? Okay. So now I've got a circle to go off of. And I'm not just going to stop there. What I'm actually going to do is highlight the entire piece here and add a new expression and I'm going to replace my A's my A1's with 1.2 my H1 with 0 B1 with 1.3 K1 with 0 and R1 with 7 Notice that that black circle turned red in a hurry. It's because this function here is red. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make sure that everything that I do when I'm done is black. For right now, I'll leave it as red just as a frame of reference. But what I will do here is I'm going to start moving things around again. And before I hide them, I'm going to click and hold on each of the icons to the left and change them to black. I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. So I'll change them all to black. And hopefully you can see what it is that I'm trying to create at this point. So I'm going to hide that and now I'm going to go into the quadratic. And once again, I'm going to create. So in order to turn this on, I'm just going to click on the function here and I can start to mess with it. And notice that the function jumps right away from here to here, but you can always go in and change it to however you want. So I'm going to say that I want it to come up to here. And that's pretty good for me. Enter it in and f of x equals 1.7. There we go. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually provide a domain restriction. So what I want is I want this to have some sort of happy face. So this is going to go, I want it to go from about here to here. So I want it to go, let's go from 
negative 4 to positive 4. And to do that, I can just click and hold and see where do I want that domain to stop and start. So I'm going to go from negative 4 that needs to be greater than, oh, this is x, and it needs to be smaller than positive 4. Now, I want there to be there, and it's going to shift down. Now I want the intersection. So I want it to go from negative 2.828 to positive 2.828. So let me go in and add another expression. And to make things easier, I'll copy and paste. Uh, my A2 is now 0.27. My K2 is 5.7. Negative 2.828 to positive 2.828. Okay. And there we go. So that's how that's going to look. And next up, I need a couple of lines, I need linear functions. We're going to go down here, and it's your basic linear function. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to add some eyebrows. I know pigs don't have eyebrows, but they do now. This one does. Okay, so we're going to go 0.4. Nah, we'll make him happy. One, two, yeah, like a little bit, and I want it to go from about negative four to so this is my keychain. This is my quadratic functions down here, these are. These are my conics, and these are my linear functions. And I want to just check make sure that everything's touching where it needs to touch and not where it needs to not. Everything looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. So something else that I want to make sure to point out is that I've started with a pretty easy shape to replicate. And I'm going to show you why that's important here very shortly. So I'm happy with this, and now I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the grid, turn off both of the axes, and I have an image. I'm going to go to share the image, click on image, and copy that link. So control C on a Chromebook or a PC, command C on a Mac. Next I'll come over to my handout. drop in the image link here and I can and next up I'm gonna go to Tinkercad it sounds like it's for kids but there are quite a few really cool things that you can do uh, I've already signed in so you're gonna to want to make sure that you create an account and log in I'm gonna click on create new design and off to the right hand side there's a little sidebar that says import you're going to choose that and then choose the file and the file that I am going to need is this one. It's asking me what kind of scale. I'm going to make this fairly small, and I'm going to show you why. And the height is only going to be 5 millimeters. It'll import, and even though I only put it at 20%, it's still pretty big. This is covering quite a bit of my landscape. It's actually covering 82 by 85 millimeters. 
So I'm going to shrink that down. And if you hold down shift, it locks it so that it's all proportionally scaled. It's kind of like a dilation. So we're going to make this relatively small. There we go, 20 millimeters. And we'll get into sizes here uh, individually. Okay. So. And we're going to go, yep, five millimeters. Okay. And something that you're going to want to make sure of is that it's going to print legitimately. Well, right now, it's not going to print legitimately because you're printing this onto nothing. So what we need to do is we need to add a cylinder. And this one just so happens to be <laughs> perfectly sized. Honestly, did not plan that part. But it's perfectly sized. It's exactly what we need. And what I need to do now is I need to compress it so that way I can actually, whoops, change it here, this button. So I'm going to bring it down just so that it's barely big enough. One millimeter thick. You don't want this too thick. It's just going to waste filament and kind of hinder your project. Okay, so we've got that there and makes it so that you can mess around with it a little bit. Uh, you can enjoy that. Last part is to make sure you saved it. Okay. So we'll save. And saving here. All changes saved. And download for 3D printing. You want to make sure that you download this as an STL file and notice that it's gone in and dropped itself into here. Uh, you're going to put that into your Google Drive folder and then fill that out, sum submit that to the link that is in your handout. Okay. So in here or in here.